Hi, you're watching Very Spatial TV, and today we'll be talking a little bit about geography and role-playing games. Hi everybody, welcome to Very Spatial TV, and these are some Very Spatial Thoughts by Frank. Recently I was thinking about something that I don't think we talk a lot about, or haven't talked a lot about in you know, the podcast and in general, is um, a game I like to play called Dungeons & Dragons. Now, I can credit Dungeons & Dragons as really my first introduction to geography or geospatial concepts at any level. D&D uh, &D gets a lot of benefit, or a lot of uh, credit, I should say, for having introduced a lot of people to math and probability statistics, an awful lot of the materials that are contained within Dungeons and Dragons are based upon simulated models and there's charts and there's all these diagrams and these uh, tables of probability and your old dice. It's a little bit about dice you just roll. Roll the dice, you come up with a result and you look at the little chart and the graph and and that's figured out whether you do something or don't do something successfully. And I think a lot of people got really interested in the math based upon playing that game. And I certainly did get interested myself in that. But something I don't think uh, gets enough credit in that game is the sheer spatial concepts that are involved in it. Um, everyone's used graph paper whenever in school, using it to do, you know, normal graphs. That's why they call it graph paper. Um, and you would sort of chart out, you know, the, the, X and Y and the little slope and the Z and MX plus you know, all that stuff. Uh, you would chart that out. But what I used to use a lot of graph paper uh, for when I was growing up was uh, Dungeons and Dragons maps. So for whatever reason, I got really interested whenever we first started playing and being the cartographer. I didn't know it was called a cartographer at the time, but that's what I was interested in doing. So as the dungeon master would describe what we'd see, I would sort of chart out and draw out the map as we were exploring it. Um, now, if you're not familiar with the game, let me back up a little bit. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons uh, requires several players, somebody who's called a dungeon master, and their role in the game is to sort of facilitate the game. And in Dungeons & Dragons, in any uh, tabletop role-playing game, I think of something called collaborative storytelling. You're all working together to try to tell a story. Now the players, they, they have a role to play and they have a lot of latitude and capability based upon what they want to do within the story. So while the DM conducts the story, the players don't always do what the DM expected them to do. So having some idea of where you're at and where you've been and how to get to where you want to go is very important in Dungeons and Dragons. It's a lot of the, the basic part of the storytelling itself. And those are obviously very spatial concepts. Uh, we're talking about place, and really we're doing these thick descriptions of place, and it gets into sort of this stuff uh, called deep maps, that a, a very thick description of what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. And a lot of that gets boiled down to these graph maps that are just line work, and they are basically vector representations of these very lush uh, dungeons that people are experiencing. And I thought that was really neat to do when I was a kid. And I used to sit back in math class, ironically enough, and spend a lot of time drawing out my own little dungeons. And that's when I got introduced to a whole different way of thinking about space, which is kind of the fundamentals of human geography. So I got an interest in becoming the dungeon master, the person who created the story. And a, part, a lot of that was creating a world. So I wanted to make a world in which my players could move and interact and, and do things and, uh, and experience that which I had in my head. But to do that, I had to come up with a lot of things in this world for them to do. And that required me to decide, this is where the village is, it's over here. And there's a castle up on the on the hill, and, and the, the people in the castle live, and they take care of the villagers, but they go to the farms way over there. And a lot of it was trying to think spatially of how these places were really laid out. And I would start to think about things like, how do people get to work every day? I and mean, that's like a big thing. They go to the farms, and they, out in the fields, they, they till the farms and then bring it back. Um, what do they do for fun? And that's sort of where the inn comes in and where the tavern, and that's where a lot of adventuring happens in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, well, at least where it starts, certainly. Uh, what, what would the, the big dungeons off in the, in the, in, in the cave systems, what, they would have scary things, and why would that be scary? And how, how would the people deal with that in their day-to-day -day lives? And a lot of this is kind of basic 
human geography stuff when you get down to it. Like, some of it's regionalism, some of it's other things, but it was a really interesting way to sort of think of a holistic society and what my players could do within that society. And I thought that was a really intriguing part of the game that got me very hooked on doing things. Uh, I evolved from there. A lot of my friends and I uh, moved on to playing science fiction based games and uh, the one that we chose, there's a lot of them, Star Frontiers and other ones, Gamma World, things like that. Uh, but the one we chose to focus on a lot was one called Traveler. Now Traveler had a very fascinating book. It was a bunch of books, like six or eight books I think in the, in the series and the original Traveler. And uh, they had an entire game uh, book on world building. So it was just about creating entire planets and, and what would be on that planet. And, and they talked about tech level. So what would be normal for that planet to do? Would they have spacefaring hyperdrive ships or would they only be using stones and rocks and things like that? Uh, they dealt with things like physical geography. So they said, well, the tilt of the, of the planet on its axis would cause these type of regions to be dominated by this climate. Uh, and, and it tapped into a lot of things I, again, didn't know at the time were basic geographic concepts, but it got me really excited to create things and to construct things and sort of think about how these systems interact and how they, they are connected in a way, a spatial way, that, I, that is critical to understanding their function, their form, and, and what they do. Um, so I don't think that these games have gotten their credit largely, it's not verbally, uh, for their spatial concepts and how they embed spatial thinking into, into what you do. Um, they are certainly my first foray into geography, even though I didn't know it at the time. Now, I'm very lucky and very fortunate. The people that I play with today, I still play today. I love to play today. Um, I'd be happy to talk all day long about Dungeons & Dragons or Traveler or any other gaming system you want to talk about. I pretty much tried them all over the years. Uh, but I'm lucky in that the people that I play with today actively are the same people I grew up with playing. Uh, we've been very close friends, a very tight-knit community. Uh, and so there's been a long history. And we can talk a lot about the change in the space that we've been doing over these years. Uh, I'm not going to admit how many. Uh, so the world that we've been inhabiting has been very similar in many ways and these things have evolved over time and we lived and worked in them one context and then years later we're doing other things with other characters. So it's a really, really exciting hobby that I really hope more people connect to and find fascinating from a spatial context. Uh, if you have any questions for me or comments or input you'd like to do, please comments in the bottom of the, of the uh, uh, video would be wonderful. I'd love to talk about any sort of role playing, particularly as it relates to geography. It's something I love and I'm very passionate about. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. Uh, it helps us with the YouTube folks and help us understand what you find interesting and in what we're doing. And if the whole channel seems interesting to you, please subscribe. Um, so again, leave comments and thanks once again. I'm Frank at Very Spatial and these have just been some of my thoughts. Mm -hmm.